my world has been the world of trying to balance uh, personal leadership development with uh, regulatory reform. And having run an accrediting agency for uh, several to over uh, 200 institutions, over a million students, uh, trying to use the regulatory framework to address issues of leadership development. And uh, in so doing, I have worked with hundreds of university presidents and board members I also uh, created uh, a nonprofit called the Institute for Creative Thinking, where I led groups of presidents and provosts. So I'd like to share some of the lessons that we learned from these experiences and apply it to the conversation we've had. Because what I've, uh, I'd like to say that to me, there are the personal development of the leader, as Gandhi said, we must be the change that we want to see in the world. We want to quote someone. And too often we see leaders say one thing, but not to be the change that they would like to see, nor reflect the qualities of leadership that they espouse, uh, clay feet, if you will. We certainly see it too often in our political leaders. Uh, but let me cite um, that today I'm working with the world in which the business model of higher education, at least in the US, is broken. Resources are a key issue. Uh, as Jonathan talked earlier, we not only are driving the bus, but the tires on the bus are losing air as it's being driven. And uh, it's coughing and uh, the engine needs a huge tune up. Uh, and so if we wanna take that metaphor, I would say that we live in a world of constant pressure and fear on the part of leaders, and particularly presidents, of the inability to lead in this era of change. And we need to support them to develop a new system, but also to reflect it in their own, uh, their own style of leadership. Let me cite to uh, say there are three buckets that I wanna talk about very quickly. Core competencies of the leaders, personal development skills and structural skills or structural elements. In terms of core competencies, uh, the Quality Assurance Commons has worked on employability skills. And the irony is that to get the first job, we need people who can communicate, problem solve, have cultural competence and collab be able to collaborate. Those are the qualities of senior leaders as well. I'll cite an example I heard yesterday of a president calling together the entire staff of the university and saying how wonderful his leadership has been. When somebody challenged the data, he called that person in later and said, don't you ever do that again. We have to be open to being challenged to the very idea that we do not see hold, uh, that we need other viewpoints in order to move forward. I uh, once called a group of presidents together and asked how many of you have a, an effective, authentic team rather than competing with the different vice presidents and junior vice presidents, not a single president raised their hand. We need a style of leadership that is collaborative that draws from inside the silos of the university and outside. And I would say that this style of collaboration has to be built on humility. I once had a group of presidents work and talk about what are the masks that they wear. And Gary mentioned in uh, one of his uh, presentations about humility. There needs to be humility of being able to be a learner. I asked a group of presidents, how many of you can be a public learner in a world in which there is so much uncertainty Again, not a single one said I can be vulnerable to express not knowing because people need me to have clarity and certainty about our future direction. And the world needs the uh, skill set of navigating this level of uncertainty, the different pressures. So I wanna say these core competencies need to be not only taught, but reflected in the leaders. The second area, personal skills, vulnerability, constant learning, and inner development. I think uh, I talk a lot to people about meditation or other ways in which they can balance themselves 
and to social and emotional intelligence, social awareness. I think Jonathan, you raised the, uh, or one of you raised the issue of, of developing consciousness. And we are talking about more than ego, we're talking about taking and moving institutions. Uh, I will cite an example where I led a conference of our whole region, all of our universities, and had speakers talk about global climate change and how that was one of the most major issues we needed to address. I tried to get a group of presidents to follow up so that we could develop an accrediting standard to assure externally that institutions would need to demonstrate how they were responding to the global climate change through curriculum, through facility management, through resource management and endowment management and the like. I could not get a single president to work with me. So we had to say that this was not on their forefront. So we have to, it's, uh, that was several years ago, we, we need to find a way to convince uh, presidents that this is where they can step out, whether it's more than just changing the endowment to fossil fuels, but it is holistic. And I think it can be done and that's where the uh, third bucket for me is external uh, regular uh, support. Uh, one, we need to have uh, commitments and the commitments need to be metric, build, followed by metrics. I'll cite an example. Uh, about eight years ago, 300 presidents cited they were going to improve completion for underserved students. A study was done five years later, fewer than 1% had done anything about it. So we need something more than public commitment to global climate change. We need metrics of accountability and we need a support system. How are others doing it? We need emulation as much as innovation. And I would say that the other issue is we need a safe space for presidents and leaders on their own to be able to share their failures, their inability to make progress in this area and to get support. Uh, I worked with a group to try to provide coaches and mentors to presidents, and it was very difficult. Their boards didn't, it, it was a sign of vulnerability to get that support. We need the help of others in sessions like this, but in safe spaces where we can um, share not only what we're doing well and for others to emulate it, but where we need to change. We also need a reward system. Uh, I'll give an example in the California State University system. When presidents' salaries were based on improving support for underserved students, we all of a sudden the needle moved because their bonuses were dependent on that. We need a way that presidents and leaders can be held accountable for change, not just expression of words. And I do believe that uh, WAS uh, and the Academy and uh, the consortium, WC, through its junior fellows program, I think we should create an ongoing model, not just something like this conference, but a model that provides sustainable ongoing support, mentoring for an intergenerational development of leadership, but where leaders not only just profess, but to share their own vulnerabilities to the younger generation and how they can lead. And I do agree, uh, Johan, you talked about indigenous knowledge. There is in Northwest Indians a phrase, help me see what I don't see so I can see more holistically. And that is what we need in leaders about how do we move from the bus we're on, to use Jonathan's metaphor, to a new bus. And that transition is going to be personal growth and development, intergenerational leadership. But I would also submit, I think we can try to move the needle with regulatory reform and reward systems, and we need to find those so that leaders are held accountable. I think it's a very exciting time with all of this knowledge about what's needed. We need examples of leaders, not the great hero as you described, but we need leaders who are building teams and collaborating and using media and technology and communication to show 
that paying attention to the earth, to human security, to, uh, to environmental justice, which is an important issue, uh, can be addressed and that we can lead in that respect while being vulnerable at the same time. I'll stop there. Thank you so much. I just really believe WAS and WC, WC can play an important role uh, just as this conference is doing in developing a new generation of leaders.